This is Twit. Emoji, like it or not, is a growing and extremely popular expression of modern communication. We can say a lot with a few little pictures, but as it turns out, pictures can be worth a thousand words or perhaps a thousand meanings. Uh, when it comes to tracking communication for the purposes of the legal system, courtroom trials are increasingly having to grapple with the varied possibilities of emoji uh, and emoticon interpretation, and courts are ill-prepared to understand. Joining us is Eric Goldman, a Santa Clara University law professor who's been keeping track of the complicated life of emoji in U.S. courtrooms. Welcome, Eric. Yeah, hi. It's great to have you here. Thank you for joining us. So yeah, thank you. why don't we kick things off by kind of setting the stage a little bit, describe maybe, I don't know if there's like a specific court case that really illustrates the challenge here. Uh, what would you say? Cause you've been following this for a while now. So you've been envisioning uh, a reckoning an emoji reckoning of sorts. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, I've been tracking every emoji and emoticon case I can find, uh, about 150 over the last 15 years. Um, and most of the time, they don't get into the good stuff. Um, they're simply recited as uh, as part of the evidence that the court considered. Um, the court doesn't actually discuss them. They aren't part of the uh, – they don't determine the outcome of the case. Um, to me, the my favorite emoji case actually is an Israeli small claims court case that came out a couple of years ago um, that involved a uh, landlord and prospective tenant discussing the tenant's interest in the apartment. And the tenant sent a message that included a string of six emojis that the court ultimately concluded signaled that the tenant wanted to take the apartment and therefore the landlord was justified in not renting it out for a period of time and that could get, be compensated for having held off the market. So that was a good example of how the emojis were part of the communications and they actually were part of how uh, the parties ended up um, assessing each other's interest in each other. So um, do you feel like now more than ever, I mean, obviously 150 cases more or less, you know, over the, the however many years, uh, it's not a whole lot of cases <laughs> to begin with, but do you feel like it's it's ramping up at this point? I feel like emoji as a, as a form of communication more so than emoticon, like right now is just has exploded. Uh, yeah, people are embracing emojis in their uh, daily usage. Um, and so as more emojis are used in our conversations online, they're going to show up more frequently in court cases. So that um, uh, you can kind of see how it's a leading indicator as the uh, as the uh, uh, communications change. Then a few years later, the courts uh, start catching uh, that change. Um, so uh, emoticons are rarely used in court cases anymore. They had a fad for a while. Um, emojis are the ones that are showing up. And 30% uh, of all uh, emoji uses just took place uh, this last year. So um, you can see as you're screening, scrolling through the um, uh, screenshot there, you can see how it's just ramping up in a typical J curve. Um, so they're coming to the courts. Um, and as they come to the courts, we're going to see more what I'll call edge cases, more situations where the um, uh, the emoji is really a key part of the, uh, the court's analysis. So are emoji more difficult to understand than regular language? I mean, like sarcasm, like if I say like, oh, I'm going to kill you, you know, like that can be interpreted different ways or how are emoji different than just regular language? It's a great question. And I think your baseline instinct is absolutely right. Emojis are just another way we're talking to each other. And because of that, emojis um, are going to be interpreted like all the other things that we interpret uh, beyond text. So we absolutely interpret vocal inflections or um, uh, ways that people are looking at each other or the hand symbols that they're using. Um, these are all things that courts have been dealing with for centuries. So there's nothing new in terms of trying to figure out the meaning of non-textual communication. The question is, is there anything that's unique, special, or different about emojis? And I do think there are some things that are, are unique or different about them. And the most obvious one is that emojis uh, look different on different platforms. Mm -hmm. An Apple's depiction of emoji might look different than an, an Android's depiction. And that kind of um, uh, disparity in how they're depicted is something that I think is going to be a little bit different. It's like if you use that same vocal inflection, but I heard a different vocal inflection because of the way the technology mediated it, that would be the better analogy for an emoji. Hmm. Now, 
also kind of reading up on this emoji isn't really appearing in the court record that a jury reads from if it's such a part such an important part of communication and if let's say a, a block of text can mean two different things based on you know whether the emoji was there versus not uh, and the the many different variations of, or interpretations of what that emoji actually stands for why is it not being included in the court record do they not does the court not see the importance or is it a technological barrier that keeps it like we don't have emoji worked into our court record system i'm sorry uh, what is it <laughs> yeah so um in general, let's talk about how evidence is been presented to a fact finder. Normally, we talk about juries. Sometimes judges will be the fact finder, but let's talk about juries. Um, most of the time, the juries get to see the evidence in question. So if it's an email, they'll get to see the text of the email. Um, but there are times in which that doesn't make sense. For example, if the um, uh, evidence might contain some extraneous uh, information, you might actually not want the jury to see the whole uh, evidence. It might cause them to actually misinterpret um, the evidence evidence. So uh, there are times at which it makes sense to orally read to the jury uh, evidence rather than letting them see it. Um, in a situation like that, then you've got the situation, what happens when you run into the emoticon or the emoji? Um, how uh, is that supposed to be shared with the jury? Um, and the courts are going to figure that out. But it starts with the premise that the emoji is an essential part of the communication. If it's treated as a frivolous or non-significant part, then it won't be given the same kind of credit. But mm. really, I think we all know better. Um, now, when the emoji is presented as visual evidence, I do want to note that if the emoji looked different between the sender and receiver, just showing one version of the emoji is still incomplete. It actually yeah. is still misleading the jury. So um, even in the case where they're seeing it, the lawyers still have to do some behind the scenes work to make sure uh, that the jury is getting the full information. Yeah. Now, do you do any work in copyright law and emoji? Like, I know that the platforms, like, you know, Microsoft owns its, you know, smiling poop emoji and Apple owns its smiling poop emoji. Like, is that correct? Like, but who, I mean, is it confusing who owns uh, the intellectual property of an emoji? <laughs> Yeah, it is, unfortunately. Um, let's start with the basics, that uh, emojis are capable of being owned under intellectual property laws, which blows a lot of people's minds. How is that even possible? Emojis should be free like the air. Um, but, uh, but in fact, um, uh, individual emojis, so the single pile of poo depiction could very well qualify for copyright protection. Um, Apple, for example, has registered hundreds, if not thousands, of different individual emoji depictions um, and uh, claims a copyright in each of those individual depictions. Um, they can also have copyright in the emoji set, the way in which the set has its own particular unique attributes or the collection of which emojis are included in the set. That's also potentially eligible for copyright protection. And emojis are also potentially eligible for trademark protection. In fact, that's not really even controversial. We have many symbols that are um, uh, commonly used that can be used for trademark purposes in a particular industry niche. Um, so the short answer is that in Individual emojis are covered by copyright and trademark law, and emoji sets might also uh, be covered by copyright and trademark law. And it creates this rights thicket where anyone who wants to come up with a new emoji set or who wants to use someone else's emoji set has to figure out if they're legally allowed to do so. What would you recommend or what would you suggest for uh, judges who encounter, you know, emoji in, a, in an increasing rate? What, what could they be doing differently that could help in, in all of this? Yeah, there's two main things that they could do differently. First, they, they should be aware that emojis might look different to different people. And so they should be expecting to see all the different depictions, not just whatever one lawyer introduces and says, this is the canonical version of the emoji. That's probably incomplete. In addition, the judges should make sure that they include the emojis that they uh, that were in evidence in the actual court opinion, rather than saying there was an emoji here when they restate the evidence. They should actually show the emoji that was issued, or if there were multiple depictions of that emoji, they should show the multiple depictions. So uh, that's something judges just don't think about. They think of the emoji as not critical evidence um, in the opinion. Opinion, and I think that's a mistake. Mm -hmm. I, I know you also work in privacy law. Um, I, I see your name everywhere. I also see that you have the monkey selfie behind you. Um, <laughs> were you involved in the monkey selfie case also? 
No, but everyone loves the monkey selfie case in my it's community. True. And who doesn't love Naruto? He's so cute. He is cute. <laughs> I can't even remember where that came down. Like who owns the who owned the selfie? Uh, that actually was a win. Nobody owns a selfie. Oh. Uh, the selfie is free for all of us to use. So I was able to buy that uh, particular image on the cheap because I didn't have to pay anyone any copyright royalties to use it. <laughs> didn't even have to pay the monkey. Yeah. Yeah. Now with a smiling mon monkey selfie emoji, that's the emoji we need. And then who would own that? That would be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. You let me know when you work through the analysis on that okay. one. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you write that you're still waiting for a meaty emoji ruling uh, to come your way out of all this. You know, like you said earlier, about 150 cases, nothing like in incredibly pivotal around decide the de being the deciding factor of a case. What what do you envision that will be when it happens? I mean, it's inevitable that it probably will happen at some point. The uh, at some point the pinnacle emoji case. But what what do you think is going to happen? I mean, it, because emoji is showing up in all different kinds of cases, there's all different ways that we might get that really big first analysis. Um, let me just give you some examples of what might occur. Um, one obvious example would be contracts. Somebody uh, says uh, in emoji uh, speak, uh, sure, I agree to those terms. And then they include emoji that's designed to be sarcastic or facetious. The same as the vocal inflection like you guys used earlier. Right. Uh, it's like, sure, I would do that. Um, and so that would be the kind of thing where there could be millions of dollars at stake in that contract um, where the emoji is actually designed to uh, uh, destroy or eliminate the uh, contract formation. Um, another example would be some kind of threat case where someone uh, is accused of having engaged in threatening behavior, like I'm going to go hurt this person. Um, but then the emoji signal that they're joking or they're not really serious about it, it's just an overstatement. Um, and uh, yet uh, the person might feel in fact threatened um, uh, or the court, uh, I'm sorry, the police might think that it was still a true threat even though the emoji uh, might uh, feel otherwise. So this could literally be the difference between someone going to jail for potentially years or walking away scot-free um, based on how we interpret the emoji in the context of these alleged threats. Well, it's easy to think about emoji as being fun and games and uh, so so light and because emoji are usually used in, a very, in a very light ways uh, in how we communicate. But it's also very interesting to um, kind of analyze it through this legal lens and realize just how complicated it makes interpretation of language. And yeah, it just seems like it's going to get uh, worse over time. Eric Goldman, uh, blog.ericgoldman.org. Org. Is that where you want people to kind of follow your your thoughts on this topic going forward? Absolutely. And uh, when we do get that meaty case, I'll be blogging it there. <laughs> right on. Eric, really appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure.